slash L.A. Bluger. You can cash out also at dollar sign A-L-L-N-A-T-I-O-N-S-C-H-I-C-A-G-O. That's cash out dollar sign All Nation Chicago. Remember that whatever the problem, sickness, or condition, we recommend you to turn it over to Jesus and he will work it out. Call a neighbor, call a friend, and let them know that the moment of inspiration experience is on live. Your announcer for this hour has been Minister Quentin Bowie. Prayer will be offered by Sister Juanita Wells, worship by our ANC Praise Team, and the next speaking voice you will hear is our pastor and your media minister, the voice of inspiration, Elder Andre R. Fluker. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your awesomeness. Yes, we thank you for being the God that sit high and yes, look low. We thank you that Isaiah called you Jehovah God Almighty. Abraham called you Jehovah Jireh because you continue to provide for us. Oh God, he God called you El Ro because you are the God that see us. We thank you all today for being God and God all by yourself. We call you the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We thank you, Father God, for continuing to meet our needs. We thank you, Lord, for continuing to wrap us in your loving arms, Lord. We thank you, God, for pouring out your spirit on today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you for bringing down every mountain, God, exalting every valley on today, God. We thank you for going before us and making every crooked path straight, oh God, and every rough place smooth on today, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for sending your word to heal us on today, God. We thank you, Father God, for that word is a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to lean to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, we acknowledge you on today, Father God. And we allow you to direct our path on today, Father. We thank you, Lord, for sending your only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. We thank you for Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. Jesus, the Alpha and Omega. Jesus, he is the beginning and the end. Jesus, he is our go-to on today, God. Jesus, hallelujah, we thank you for him being the first and the last. We thank you for Jesus, our joy on today. Jesus, our peace on today. Jesus, hallelujah, our healer on today. Jesus, our deliverer on today.
you are, we honor him, celebrate him, and thank him for his blood, the blood that reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. It even gives you strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. You just ought to shout the blood. Still works. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. His blood is still working. Wherever you are, welcome to All Nations Church Without Walls, the Happy Church Online. We're here to give God the glory, the praise, and the honor. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're faced with. May I celebrate you today and tell you that his blood is still working. Hallelujah. His blood is still working. We honor God today for his presence. We honor him for his power. And we thank him for the fulfillment of his promises among his people. And we glorify him. We celebrate Lady Fluker today. Thank God for Lady Fluker. Thank God for the minister, missionary, deacon, elders, all of you, wherever you are. We thank God for you to the greatest church in the world, the All Nations Church of God in Christ. The church that works and the ministry that we is. We are happy to be in the house of the Lord one more time. While you're standing, while you're standing wherever you are, I want you to go with us to the book of Psalms. Psalm 46. Psalm 46. I want you to go with us to Psalm 46. I want to read one verse from Psalms 46. Psalms 46. The stanza you'll hear and you'll read will be as follows. Psalms 46 and 10. When we all have it, let us say amen. amen. Psalms 46 and 10. You find these words, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Those of you that hear it, those of you in your bedroom, your house, wherever you are, I want to talk to you from this thought. Be still and know. Just before I get into this, passes of scripture there is through my devotion a song that God dropped into our spirit and I want to sing just the two verses uh, that really speak the sentiments of what I want to share with you today and it simply says it's all in his hand it's all in his hand Whatever yes. the problem is in his hand, it's all in his hand, it's all in his hand, he will fix it. I am God. 
I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. I want you to notice as I looked at this passage, it said, be still and know that I. Yeah. And then there was a word inserted in a parenthesis form that says, am God. The psalm cover a wide variety of subjects, but one single element that sticks out to me as I read the psalm is the word praise. Praise is the uh, word that is so prevalent in the psalm because the psalm constituted the hymnal of Israel. And the key word or the key to worship is praise. We praise God for what he's done and we worship him for who he is. Because according to the scripture, the Bible says it was given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And because of that, I believe God undoubtedly inspired and preserved the Psalms because they accurately reflect the full range of human emotions. They help God's people, the children of God, to find their way through the vast vicissitudes of life. But brothers and sisters, there's really no way to really describe or outline the psalm except how it is written in the book called the Bible. Yeah. Psalm is separated into five books. In these five books, the key word that I submit to you is praise. And one of the key verses or one of the key psalms for me is Psalms 23. It goes on to say, the Lord is my shepherd. And as I look within the confines of it, because I want you to understand who the Lord is, I want you to know that the Lord is, that means he's present. Yeah. The Lord is my, that means he's personal. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd. He, he is present, he is personal, and he is my protector. Yeah. He shall, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He's personal. He is present. He is a provider. He is a protector. That's who God is. The Lord is in my life. Yes. Brothers and sisters, may I submit to you today that you don't have a problem. All you need is to exercise your faith in God. Yeah, the psalm gives so many wonderful things to help us understand who God is in our life. Uh -huh. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's, that's just enough to get happy there because in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this disaster that we're in, it is a comfort to know that the Lord is. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's just enough to give God the praise the Lord is. Yeah. But here, yeah. here in in uh, our text today, Psalms 46, we begin at the beginning of the book to the second book of Psalms. It begins in 42 and 43 by giving a synopsis of the first uh, for the house of God. It begins in 42, verse 1. It says, as the heart panted after the water brook, so panted my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? May I submit to you, my dears and sirs, it is not until you lose something that you begin to appreciate what you have. Yeah, I remember preaching a sermon some years ago. You got what you wanted, but you lost what you had. But brothers and sisters, there is a blessing in coming together. There's a blessing in the koinonia, the fellowship of the saints. Because when we come to the house of worship, we all have sin and we all have issues. And because we all have these issues, when we come to the house of worship, we don't come with our nose turned up. We don't come with our head up in the air as if we've arrived but we come to the house of worship because I need some help 
coming because I need help from God. My brothers and sisters, may I just insert this because as I surfed the way up yesterday, I come across a man of God, Bishop Woodson, who began to share that the church is non-essential. Yeah, he began to suggest that the reason why the church is non-essential is not because the government shut us down, it's because we spoke it to be down from the very beginning before this even took place. Yeah, you remember how the church used to be. We were considered the holy rollers. Yeah, we were the tongue talkers. Yeah, we were the hand clappers. But somewhere along the line, we moved from being church of God in Christ to being abbreviated to coaching. My brothers and sisters, the power is in the church. And the reason the power is in the church is because it's of God and it's in Christ. But whenever you have coaching, it's operative of the enemy to show you that I can take you where I want to take you because the power is in the church of God in Christ. No, am I trying to put down any denomination or reformation? No, not by far. But because I'm in the greatest church in the world, it is my position and my purpose to preach the gospel. For the Bible says I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. Yeah, we came in, we talked about the long dresses. We talked about how the faces look. We talked about the fan of the nails. We talked about how you were Jezebel if you had lipstick on. We talked about all of this petty stuff. And then we talked about it so much that people started getting research and looking in the word for themselves. Only to discover that Jezebel had nothing to do with how I look. But it had something to do with the spirit in which I possess in trying to control something that God never intended for me to control because the last I checked God is in control the brothers and sisters we've lost our power we've lost our influence because we have dumb it down to try to bring the masses in the house of worship. I understand according to the word of God, Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, he said, I'll draw all men unto me. I don't have to go outside and wear my pants down sagging just so I can attract somebody whose pants is sagging. I know what Paul said to the weak became I as weak and to them became I as them so that I may win some, but I don't have to compromise my standard just so I can win you because whatever I did to get you is going to be the same thing I'll have to do to maintain to keep you and God wants to troll you so that his Holy Spirit can keep you yeah we're not essential because we've let down our God people of God no you can't join it you've got to be born in it my brothers and sisters we've dropped our cards we dropped down our cards and somewhere along the line, we become so intellectual that we lost our spirit. We become so anointed that we lost the power. Yeah, there's something about the anointing that destroys the yoke. But brothers and sisters, that just pause just long enough to tell you in this hour to be still. To be still and know. And by the time we conclude this, I'll tell you what it is that you need to know. But I just wanted to drop that in to the believers so that we could understand that when the government began to close things down, one of the key things that they closed down was the church. Yeah. But I never seen the tavern closed. I didn't see the liquor store closed. I didn't see the whorehouse closed. Everything else stayed open. And may I submit to you to their defense, their spirit was consistent. Everything that the liquor was dying to do, it did it. They were still murdering. They were still killing. They were still deceiving. They were still lying. Their spirit was consistent. Well, my brothers and sisters, I come from the church of God in Christ. I come where the power is, where the Holy Spirit is moving. I come where demons are cast out. I come from a place where people came to pray. They came to praise. They came to hear the preacher. But my brother and sister, we lost our power because we're trying to attract people and not the power or the promise or the presence of God. We become non-essential because we've lost 
our focus. God wants to get our focus back. He wants us to get our vision back. Because when you get your vision back, you're able to see what it is that God wants you to see through the power and the presence of God. As I look at this, the hunger and the thirst for the worship, for the God, for the house of God. A young lady, Lady Fluker, had talked to we tall and checking on members throughout the week, throughout the month, just to make sure that everybody's doing well. And the deaconess said, Lady Fluker, have you reached the capacity? I want to get into the house of worship. I miss being in my church. I miss being in the house of God. There's going to come a time when you want to be in the house of God. You need to be in the house of God. And if you don't have nothing in you, they can take whatever from you because you don't have nothing to sustain you. That word have I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against thee. I want to go to the house of worship because I know where the spirit of the Lord is. There he is. Liberty. Psalm 44 describes the cry of despair. Yeah, it sounds like where we are now, a cry of despair. We, we need God. We want God. We, we aspire to receive from God. But because we've lost our hope, we've lost our power, and we've dumbed down our standards. We lost everything we had because we're trying to get somebody. I come to tell you, everybody that's on your team ain't in your corner. And everybody that's in your corner ain't on your team. you got to have spiritual discernment to know who's there to be you and who's there to hurt you. You got to know who's there to help you and who's there to hinder you. You got to know who's there to leech off of you and who's there to build you up. You got to have spiritual discernment because you need God in this hour. Psalm 45 is the nuptial song of a king. And here in Psalm 46, it is considered Zion's battle song. Yeah, it, it made me think about why, why Martin Luther must have penned his famous hymn, A Mighty Fortress Is Our God. But brothers and sisters, here lies the foundation of Psalm 46. It begins in such a powerful way. The stanza of Psalm 46 begins by saying, God is. Yeah. You remember in Psalms 23, it yes. said, the Lord is. Yeah, it said in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Yeah, but here in Psalm 46, it appears that the writer has matured. And he moves from the Lord to God. He becomes more personal. He says, God is. Yeah, he could have just said, God, our refuge and strength. But the word is, is inserted for a purpose. It says God is. Who God is. What is God? God is our refuge and strength. When is God our refuge and strength? I'm glad you asked. In very present. Where is he? A very present. He is a very present in trouble. Lord have mercy. He's a very present help in trouble. And how does all this affect me? How? I tell you why. Because he's help. Jesus is my help. As a matter of fact, God is whatever you need him to be. Whenever you need him to be, wherever you need him to be, God simply is who he is in your life. But brothers and sisters, as I come to a close, I know you're thinking, where is God during this pandemic? Come on. Let me add a word that God had been dealing with me this morning. I was kind of trying to get away from it. But in Sunday school, uh, Deaconess said the word and the Holy Spirit leaped in my spirit wow. to say, that's why I told you to use it. Wow. And so we're going to use for the sake of giving this text some clarity and purpose. We're going to say, where is God in this disaster? Uh -huh. 
Where is God in this pandemic? What, what does this disaster or what does this pandemic tell us about God's character? Let me just share with you a disaster is a sudden event. Uh -huh. Such as an accident or a natural catastrophe that causes great damage or loss of life. May I submit to you that 65,000 total to date uh, have lost their lives due to COVID-19. Yeah, and for you, pandemic is a disease prevalent over a whole country or the world. An outbreak of a pandemic disease, may I say again, so that you'll understand the figure or some stats, 65,000 total have to date have died due to COVID-19. But brothers and sisters, may I submit to you because he gave me the word disaster, I need to tell you that there are three types of disasters. One is natural. Uh -huh. Hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, floods, and volcanoes. Two is the technological. Yes, it's chemical releases, power outages, natural gas explosions, and three, man-made. Uh -huh. Man-made, the terror attacks, race riots, mass shootings, COVID-19. Uh -huh. It is a disaster, and it, it would happen in 45. Yeah. I'll just keep on moving right along. What does it say about God's character during disaster? I need to tell you, God cannot be divorced from disasters. Satan can't do anything without God's permission because, thank you, uh, Sister Hawkins, God is sovereign in every moment of your life. God cannot be discredited from disasters. God cannot be defined by disasters. As a matter of fact, let me just pause just parenthetically to tell you, because God cannot be defined in disasters, may I tell you as a believer, you cannot be defined by Satan. And the only way you cannot be defined by Satan is if you refrain from Satan uh, confining you. You cannot be defined by Satan if you keep him from uh, refining, defining you. And so may I submit to you today that what he confines, he defines. So as long as you keep him from confining you, you cannot be defined by devil. Because God says greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. You cannot confine what God has designed. And because God has designed me to not be confined by thee, I will not be defined by thee because I am God's child. I'm a royal priesthood, a holy nation. I've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light, my brother and sister. God is there all of the time. Yes. Erwin Lutzer said, he said, often the same people who ask where God was following a disaster thanklessly refused to worship and honor him for years of peace and calmness. Yeah, they disregard God in good times, yet think he is obligated to provide help when bad times come. They believe the God they dishonor when they are well should heal them when they are sick. The God they ignore when they are wealthy should rescue them from impending poverty. And the God they refuse to worship what uh, went on when on earth uh, is still should rescue them when the earth begins to shake. Yeah. God cannot be defined by disaster. God cannot be defeated by disaster. And God brings good out of evil. Yeah. You remember during the plague, during the time of the plagues in Egypt, God, clearly God sent those plagues. Then you have the time of Noah, the flood, obviously was sent by God. It says regarding Jonah, God hurled a storm into the sea. In other words, we must see God in disaster. Now I gave you clarity to what I say when I always 
always say they always sing that there's glory after this. I discovered through my teaching, I discovered through my research that there's glory in this. Yeah. Either God is doing it or he is allowing it. Either way, there's glory in this. And I'm not going to allow the enemy to make me believe that God is not my help, that God is not my strength, that God is not my refuge, that God is not my help. My brother and sister, it says here in the psalm, God is my refuge and strength. Yeah, may I submit to you that as we begin to share, refuge by definition is a condition of being. Safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. May I submit this again because I want you to repeat and I want you to remember this word condition. Refuge is a condition mm -hmm, of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. But brother and sister here in Psalm 46 and 10, he says to be still. Yeah. Be still comes from a Hebrew word, rafa meaning to cause to fall <laughs> to let go don't forget condition uh -huh. be still simply means uh, to cause to fall uh -huh. to let go as Lady Fluker uh, was on Facebook Live on Thursday during her uh, Oprah, Winford, Oprah Winfrey impersonation uh, one of the callers and one of the guests began to say I had to protect myself from my covering. Oh my God, that blessed me. It also gave confirmation to this text. Remember, be still simply means in the Hebrew, a uh, cause to fall, to let go. The young lady said, I had to protect myself from my covering. My so how is it? This is what really blessed me here in this text because he said be still and know. Yeah. The be still is the reality that he is causing me to fall. If, if, if God is my refuge uh -huh. and God is my strength, yeah. I, I need you to understand the strength is in my faith. Right. Oh, and my faith lies in the condition that my faith is in. What is your faith built upon? Is your faith in your tradition? Is your faith in your intellect? Is your faith in your feeling? My brothers and sisters, my faith is in Jesus. And my faith is in Jesus. He simply hit tell me to tell you that he is my refuge and my strength. Yeah, it says God is my refuge and my strength. Let me tell you what it simply means. He says, be still and know. That's the text today. That's the word. That's the subject. Be still and know. That's all God gave you. That's all he wants you to know. That's enough. Those are four words that you need to apply to your conversation. Four words you need to apply to your memory. He said, be still and know. Yeah. What do you need to know? Number one, he says that I am. He said, be still and know I am. Not only do he want you to know who I am, but he wants you to know that I am God. I am is necessary. I am is what you need. I am is governing your life and your existence. As long as you apply your spirit to the I amness of God, he will be the God that you need him to be when you need him to be because the enemy comes against you like a flood. The spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against the handiwork of the enemy because I am is with me. He says I am and know who God. Not only should I know who but know how. How I'm going to exalt him. Yeah. Where did I know I'm going to exalt him in the earth? So we look at the what, the who, the how, and the where. When you know, he says, it comes from the Hebrew word, yada, simply, literally meaning to know. God wants you to know him for yourself. Thank you, Apostle Paul. He said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. I need to know what I am. I need to know who 
God. I need to know how exalt him. I need to know where in the earth because she said it in Sunday school this morning, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. My brothers and sisters, may I just pause just long enough to tell you that while in Sunday school, I discovered in Zephaniah that as the teacher was teaching that the children of Israel had lost the word of God in the temple. That's why we're in the state we're in now. History is repeating itself. The children of Israel lost the word of God in the temple. How in the world can you enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise to be thankful unto him and bless his name and don't have the word in you? I can tell you how because the Bible says that word have I hid in my heart and you can't hide it if you don't study. The word says study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed but rightly divide the word of truth my brothers and sisters be still and know the word be is a verb it simply means to exist to exist in a condition be still uh, to cause to fall to let go be still and know but brothers and sisters I'm here to tell you that you gotta learn how to be still because when you learn how to be still God can use you for his glory thank you all week Lady Fluker was telling me to be still didn't even know that God was using her to confirm the word that he birthed in my spirit. Yeah, I'm sitting there so happy. You know how a child, when they're on the end of a table, they're eating some candy, they're eating some food, and they're just moving all around, just happy. I, I got some ice cream. You can't have none. You can't afford it. I got some ice. They're just happy, and they're exuberant because of what they have. I was just moving, and Lady Fluke. I guess she got a little nervous because of my movement. She said, won't you just be still? Yeah, won't you just be still? I, I couldn't get an attitude. I couldn't get angry or upset. I just knew that it was the divine moment because she said, be still. And I began to say, yes, I'm listening. My ears are intent to hear your voice. He said, be still. Not only did he want me to be still, but he wanted me to know. That's what I came to tell you. When you be still, there are some things that you need to know. Yeah, we are a church. A church that is of God. And we are in Christ. Because the Bible says it is in him that we live that we move, that we have our being. I'm so glad that I'm in the Lord because being in the Lord gave me an opportunity to feel his presence. But the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, it says and ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And the reason the Holy Ghost is coming upon you is because he wants you to be a witness. Yeah, that's what the church got to go back to do. We got to go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come that his house might be filled. I see it not as a nursery rhyme, but I see it to help you understand my heart and my mind. I don't want to preach the crowded seats and empty people. Empty people don't know God. Empty people don't spend time with God. Empty people don't have a relationship with God but the people that love God are filled with his spirit. I want some people that feel like Jeremiah. You can keep me out of the church but you can't keep the church out of me because it feels like fire. Shut up all in my bones. I like to be still. I like to be dignified. I like to stand and even give a lecture. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he 
done for me. My soul cries out hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. I can hear the psalmist saying, even as the teacher said this morning, that people will play in your past and keep the joy from the present to try to keep your faith from the future. All because they don't know nothing. All they know is your past. And if that's all you got on me, you don't have enough to define me. Because the last I checked, he delivered me and he brought me out of darkness into his marvelous life. I thank you, Lady Fluker, when you said in Sunday school, it's amazing how God can deliver you, but he can't deliver me. But I'm here to tell you today, I don't care what you think about me. I don't care what you see about me, because every time I pick up the Bible, there's always something to encourage me, to empower me, to live me. I give you one, the Bible said, in the midst of disaster, in the midst of a pandemic, the word says in the book of Psalm, you though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, cause the Lord is with me. Be still and know that the Lord is with me. And when I feel alone, when I feel deserted, when I feel disrespected, he go on to tell me that my rod and I stand and comfort me. And then he go on to tell me that my enemies are necessary. Don't describe what they do to you. But just say thank you for your enemies. Bless them that despitefully use you because your enemy is necessary. Said he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And this is the part I like about it. Not only will they be at the table, but they get to see God at work. He anointed my head with all I'm so glad that he didn't stop there because why the haters are watching the Lord for his all on me. He said, sure, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. So you're wondering why I walk with the swag I walk. Because I got somebody that's following me. You wonder why I can sing a song in the midst of a strange land. Because I got somebody watching over me. Angels are watching over me. And I came to tell you, don't let the devil trick you. But be still and know that he is your God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates for with thanksgiving and in his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. I came to tell somebody you might be in the midst of a disaster. You might be in the midst of a pandemic. You might be in the midst of a outbound of unemployment. You might be on the verge of giving up. But I came to tell you, be still and know that God is 
your help. I be in the midst of a sickness, but I came to tell you, be still and know he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and with his stripes, yeah. I am healed, be still, and know, don't give up, be still, don't go in the time, be still, don't talk negative, be still, don't foul, be still, don't snoop, be still, don't bow, be still, yes, yes. trying to tell you, be still and know. Whatever God promised, he's going to perform it. But brothers and sisters, you might not know Abraham, but since I got the same letter at the beginning of my name, let me just submit to you a word from Abraham. This is a word from Andre. Andre staggered not at the promises of unbelief. But he was strong in faith, being fully persuaded that what God has promised, he's able also to perform it. But brothers and sisters, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Just be still. Because to be still is to cause you to fall. This is the purpose that God is bringing. He said, be still and know. Be still comes from the Hebrew word that simply says, calls to fall uh -huh. and then he says no uh -huh. so the reason why he's calling you to fall or causing you to fall is because he wants you to rest he wants you to relax and he wants you to rely on him because when I come here somebody that's strong enough to catch me I'm finna show you yeah you two better come I'm sorry you better come. Because if you drop me, I'm going back. Hallelujah. He says to be still simply means to cause to fall. But the reason he's causing you to fall is because he wants you to know that the condition is he's going to protect me. He's going to cover me. And not only is he going to cover me, he's going to catch me. Be still and know. Here is the be still, and this is the no. Be still, and no. Ah! I am, I am, I am. Be still, and know that God is everything you need him to be. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I want you to stop in the name of love. Because we got to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus into your life. So that you can have the same testimony that we have that God is our refuge and our strength. You may be wherever you are. And you don't know God. You don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. But brother and sister, we offer Christ to you. That's the reason why we're alive. Because we want you to give the Lord your life. He says, I come that you might have life. And that more abundantly. But brothers and sisters, if you don't know God, you don't know anything. But if you know God, you know everything. Because he's going to protect you and keep you from falling. Be still and know is the Old Testament version of what he says in the New Testament. He says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. Be still and know. Brother, my sister, 
little boy, little girl, you're never too young to give the Lord your life. You may be where you are. You want to give the Lord an opportunity and give you an opportunity to meet him for yourself. If that's you and you don't know Christ and you don't know God and you want to accept him into your life, I want you to put it there in the comment section and say, I want to know God. I want Jesus into my life. And if that's you, you don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to be scared. But we're going to pray the sinner's prayer with you so that you can accept the Lord Jesus into your life so that he can live with you and reign in your life. Repeat these words with me, dear God. Here I am, a sinner in need of a savior. I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God has raised his son from the dead and I am saved. Come into my heart, live within me, and I shall be your child. In Jesus' name, amen. If that's you and you prayed that prayer, I want you to put it in the comment section and say it. I'm one of them today. Who is the one? The one that said I gave my life to the Lord. There were 10 lepers, but one came back to say thank you. You be the one. Put it in the comment section and say it. I gave the Lord my life. I gave the Lord my heart. And then when this is all said and done, I want you to be my guest at the All Nations Church of God in Christ, 1525 South Pulaski, and meet us there to be a part of a good body of believers who love God, know God, and teach the word of God so that you can be who God called you to be. But brothers and sisters, we thank God because the angels of the Lord are rejoicing over you, you, and even you. Come on, let's celebrate God for the new souls that gave life to the Lord. We celebrate you. We honor God for you. Praise God. The greatest choice you have ever made was to give the Lord your life. God bless you.
was preaching, I was sitting there, and he's not kidding. I kept saying, won't you be still? You like somebody with ADHD. He didn't tell you that part. I'm like, you can't be still. You just keep walking back and forth. You moving and you rocking. And, and then as he was preaching today, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like somebody on crack. I'm sitting here bending back and forth. I'm just moving like this. Then I'm stuck. You know when it get real good, you start moving side to side. You, you just can't help yourself. You just moving side to side. You rocking back and forth. You like somebody have lost your mind. But when he was preaching the word and he said he is. God is a very present help in the time of trouble. Whenever I need him, he gonna show up. Whenever I call on him, he gonna show up.
pleasantly pleased at the same time. And he did not know that on Tuesday, the day before, uh, I had to take my car to uh, the shop. And anybody know anything about a Mercedes having an ML350, you know that it's very costly. So I took it on that Tuesday, and uh, the young lady, uh, the service advisor, after he dropped it off, uh, gave me the loaner, and she called me that Tuesday evening, and she said, well, uh, the price for your vehicle to be repaired, you need a catalytic converter on the right side. And uh, But the technician highly recommend that you do both sides, do the left as well, because there's a 90% chance that uh, you'll end up bringing it back. It could be two days, it could be two months. And she said, so the price of that is $2,827. And I said, well, I said, boy, that's a lot of money to pay unexpectedly. And uh, I said, what's the best you can do? Um, she said, well, you know, um, she pretended to be working with figures. And she said, uh, well, you know, um, with the discount, um, I can get that down to, uh, uh, let's see, uh, $2,200. I said, okay, I said, well, okay, that's fine. Uh, I'll do that. That was on that Tuesday. Uh -huh. Mr. Bowie uh, asked the people to sew on Wednesday. Uh -huh. He said, sew whatever ending in a nine, and I'm telling you, they were coming in. People were doing it that night, and, and, and then uh, talked to Paige later on, and she said she wasn't even on the Zoom Bible class, but she said, it was Tuesday, it was Tuesday, Tuesday, I'm sorry. So then on, on uh, the next day, that e later on that night, Paige said, um, the Lord told me to be a blessing to you. Well, I said, oh, really? She said, so I'm getting ready to cash out you some money. So she cashed out over a hundred something dollars. I said, well, bless the Lord. And, and then the next morning, I saw more cash apps coming in, more people sewing, and then somebody that had even sold on that Tuesday sent more money. And so I said, now look at here, God. Now wait a minute. So I had the nerve to call the car dealership back. I called them back, and I said, you know, let me speak to my service advisor. And I said, by the way, I said, you said 2200 but I believe that there's something even better y'all can do. And, 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 and she was sitting here, well, well, she said to me, what amount are you comfortable with? She said, I'm getting ready to go in here and talk to my manager, but I just need to know what amount are you comfortable with? And I gave her my figure, I said, well, this is what I'm comfortable with. I wasn't going to even try to shortchange it. I need you to take it all the way down. I want you all to know the seeds that were planted that you all cash out to me was a third of the bill. Just like that. Only God can do it. You be willing and obedient. God said, I'll work everything out for you. And you can speak to those people and tell them what you want to pay. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Come on. That's why the purpose is that I sing because I'm happy. Come on. I sing because the Lord is offering y'all. Come on, we got to bring up, but you cannot shortchange God. Amen. He will, he'll beat you every time. Amen. You cannot beat him in giving. I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. You, he know what we are, where we are. He know what's happening. Amen. He'll make your mechanic bill to the amount that you can afford to pay. Amen. And save you some money left so you can go buy something else. I love God on today. Amen. We're going to bring the Lord. Amen. An offering. Amen. Mother called me up on the phone. And she said, daughter, the Lord didn't tell me to pay 10%. She said, he told me to pay 20%. Come on. He, she said, I got to obey God. And, and mama just gave me a handful of money and said, this is my 20%. Because you cannot be him giving. 
Hallelujah. We believe in paying the tithe. We believe in bringing the Lord a generous offering according to the way he's blessed us. Amen. We want you to sow on today. We want you to give liberty on today. Hallelujah. You partner with us on Facebook or through any of the social media outlets. You can go to our website at www.thechurchthatworks.org. Make your contribution. I actually remember. No, you can pay by you can you can sell us at all nations, C O G I C, at hotmail.com. You can pay by credit card with a swipe capability or your debit card. Amen. If you're writing a check, you can make it payable to All Nations Church of God in Christ. We're located at 1525 South Pulaski Road in Chicago, Illinois. 60623 is our postal zip code. Amen. They're going to put up on the screen the various ways that you can participate in giving. Come on, all you got to do is click the button and make your contribution. Amen. They're going to give you further instructions, those of you that are listening to us, streaming live. You'll be able to give those of us that are here in the audience. Amen. Another cent for our feet. Bring your seat on today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Uh, God, we just thank you because you are God. And you are God alone. We thank you for the preached word on today. We thank you for that rich word. If we didn't know before, we do know now. And because you are a very present help, time of trouble. God, we trust you on today. Therefore, we sow our seeds on today. God, and we do expect you to give it back to us because you said in your word that you will give it back to us. You said, I'll prove it to you. You bring your tithes and all. If you bring it to the storehouse, you won't have room enough to receive it. God, every seed for on today, we speak a special blessing over them and their families, God. That you will bless them not many days from now. That you will do exactly according to your word. Cause men to give into their bosom. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Let every believer say amen. amen. Come on, hold that seat up in your right hand. Come on, why do we put it in the right hand? Because we don't believe in giving God what's left. Come on, bring your seat. Our cell 